Okay, let's uh, make a video, but uh, first let's point out a couple magnets here. This one's uh, larger and uh, it's also a lot more powerful. It's an N55 Gauss neodymium. This one is smaller and it's a much less powerful magnet. I think it's an N40 Gauss. I know it's not an N35, yeah, it's an N40 Gauss. So it's larger and more powerful. So which one of these do you think actually has the larger uh, footprint, magnetic footprint underneath the supercell here? The larger magnet that's more powerful? Or the smaller magnet that's less powerful. Well, let's uh, take the uh, powerful magnet and uh, place underneath the supercell here. There we go. Let's zoom in. Take a look. Here you can actually see if I get to top down on it right there. Here you can see the footprint right here. You can actually see a weaker footprint out here, but the main one right here is uh, pretty small. Also, too, if you look closely, you'll notice that there's a black ring. This is actually a really important video. You see this black ring around the outside of the physical magnet here? Now, on a normal, non-really powerful magnet, this would be a bright ring, and you'll see that here in a second. Okay, you do see that, right? Okay, so let's remove the large, or powerful magnet and put in the small. It doesn't matter if it's cube shape or cylinder shape. You know, field geometry makes no partake of uh, the actual shape of the magnet. Okay. You notice the bright ring around the outside of the magnet? You'll also notice, if I zoom out here, the face spatial footprint of the magnetic field hypertrochoid or spirograph-like pattern goes most of the way to the outer edge of the cell. Isn't that interesting? Actually, the uh, shadow you actually see on there is actual burned-in image from that really powerful magnet <laughs> and also a ring magnet, but here you can actually see how bright it is along the edge of this magnet. But also, too, the footprint is larger. The reason for this is that there's no such thing as magnetism only. Magnetism is merely the dielectric field. Okay? This is the conjugate field geometry, the magnetodielectric field geometry. And let's put, see how much smaller this is? And if I let the, uh, the supercells actually, depending on how they're made, they develop like a piece of film. You'll actually notice the black ring forming. This magnet is actually so powerful at N55 Gauss, and it is really powerful. But it has a much smaller spatial footprint. This is always confuses people when they uh, get the really powerful magnets. Like, yeah, the field's not, doesn't extend as far outside of this magnet. That's right. And it's like, do you know why? And no, nobody knows why. You get asked some of the best physicists and uh, theoretical physicists on Earth, all of them PhD, and none of them will have the answer for you because they don't understand what magnetism is. They have no idea. They think, well, magnetism is being emitted by skirmions or magnons. It's just particle fantasy nonsense, but nor do they have any comprehension of field theory. Just none whatsoever. So, but uh, I'll answer this in the lecture, and of course all of this is answered in the fourth edition of my book larger spatial footprint okay if you like these videos so please click the link below any donation is always helpful i need to remake the cell has been burned in by a couple of uh, ring magnets and uh, you also see the bright center of the magnet right there let me zoom in zoom in doesn't doesn't work really well on a supercell because uh, it's not like there's super fine details to look at as you zoom in. Well, there actually can be, especially on a ring magnet, which neither one of these are. So, thanks so much for watching. There's the answer, but you may not still understand it. The smaller magnet with the weaker field has a much larger spatial magnetic footprint than does the larger magnet with the really strong field. And the reason for this is, is the stronger the field becomes, the tighter and smaller spatial the actual magnetic field becomes. It makes no sense, but that's because you don't understand that uh, the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. Capacitance is directly relational to the dielectric, not the magnetic. A magnet is not a magnet, nor does a magnet, quote unquote, have a magnetic field. When you increase one thing, you increase both things. The magnetism is uh, denotatively force in motion, and we can say creates space. But when we talk about increasing the power of a magnet, what we're actually doing is increasing the dielectric. And when you increase the dielectric, it overthrows the magnet, the magnetism of the magnet, and it has a smaller spatial footprint. This is contrary to what people understand. They think, well, it's a more powerful magnet, it should have a bigger field. No, girlfriend, just the opposite is the case. Thank you so much for watching. This is one of the big secrets of magnetism. Have a nice day.
click the link below if you like these videos, and I'll uh, catch you later. Bye.